Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, how are you this morning? Yeah. Good. Let's all stand in this house. We're so excited to uh, be here on a beautiful Sunday morning. Nice, cool, and crisp day. And uh, I'm just I'm excited about what God's going to do in this place this morning. We're so happy to have the Sis family back with us this morning. We got Sister Tiffany singing with us this morning. And uh, Brother Eric's going to be ministering to us. And uh, we're really excited about that. And uh, so good to see so many familiar faces, um, especially Ashley Waller and Braxton. So good to have y'all uh, on Mount Plus this morning. And uh, I tell you what, there's no telling what God can do in this place if we'll just push everything else aside. And if we'll just focus on what he's got planned for us this morning. If we will lift up our worship uh, to him uh, without any restrictions or anything like that. You know what? I know that he's going to come down and he's going to do some amazing work in this house this morning. I don't know all the needs that are in this place. I don't. But God does. He can look down and he can see exactly what you got going on. Uh, so let's all lift our hands and let's get ready for this worship uh, session that we're about to enter into. God, we just thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful morning you've given us. God, we thank you that we get another chance to come into this, this sanctuary and worship and praise your holy name. God, I pray as we begin to Go into this time of worship, dear Lord. God, that you would just let it be pure and genuine, dear Lord. God, I pray that you let it lift up to you, dear God, and I pray that when it hits your ears, dear Lord, God, that it moves you in such a way that you will come down and anoint this house, dear Lord. God, we expect mighty things to happen in this place. And Jesus, I just pray that you would just be in each and every part. God, we'll give you all the praise and glory you deserve this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. This first song is called With Lifted Hands. Y'all worship with us.
for God's mercy and grace. Uh, it's not, definitely not good enough. But you know what? I'm so glad that when he looked down at me and when he was on that cross, that I was good enough. And uh, he, shed, he shed all that blood for, for you and I this morning. So he is worthy of our praise. Don't worship with us.
two different kinds of spaghetti. So, so if you don't if you don't like spaghetti, you just pack something and you bring it. All right. Um, also, uh, there's tickets available for our children's ministry bog bag raffle. Um, if you uh, need some tickets for that, please see Sister Courtney. Um, they are a dollar a piece, and um, that directly goes to help the children's ministry fund. Um, also, we've got tickets available for the men's ministry gun raffle. Um, those are five dollars a piece. I don't have any of those this morning, but uh, if you'll get in touch with me, I can make sure that Brother Michael gets them to you. And um, also our Food for Friends uh, shelf back there, we need to go ahead and get that refilled. Um, I know we had a lot of food on there um, in December that we sent that way, and uh, just an extreme blessing. So um, some prayer requests that we want to mention here. We want to continue to remember Sister Missy Williams and uh, Pastor Rodney and New Life Baptist Church as Sister Missy is battling cancer. Uh, also, Dewey Hubbard, Dorinda Webb, Caden Williams, and Randy Shelton, um, they are all battling cancer also. Um, and uh, I want to remember Brother Landon Hagwood and Sister Ashley Waller, um, as they are continuing treatment and uh, continuing their fight. Um, we want to remember Sister Lisa Hammond. Um, she is recovering uh, in the hospital, and uh, she is trying to get home. And um, so pray that, that God you know, provides a way for her to get home. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, Sister Ashley, she, she's waiting on a chair, isn't she? She's actually at a rehab. She's going to have all the stuff that you deliver on Monday. Awesome. She's going to be discharged on Monday. Awesome. All right. So pray that everything goes through with that and she gets to come home. So um, Becca Butler, she is recovering from eye surgery. I remember her. Um, Charlie Bittinger and Charles Palmer, they both need healing in their bodies. Uh, Skylar Palmer, um, this is a young lady that was in a wreck. Um, she's recovering from having several surgeries. Um, Hunter Bell uh, continuing to recover um, from a, a surgery after having a head-on collision. Um, but he is, like I said, Wednesday night, continuing to make progress. And uh, so we pray that it you know, keeps going that way. Uh, Kathy Ann Chapman, um, she's recovering from surgery. Um, we also want to remember um, uh, Brody, uh, who's going to be having an EEG performed this week. Um, remember Cindy uh, Siddle as well. She's not feeling well this morning. That's why they're not able to be with us. And then also Sister Amanda um, is uh, not feeling well, so she wasn't able to be with us this morning. Um, and then we want to remember the family of Charlie Hubbard. Um, Brother Charlie Hubbard passed away this week. Um, this is uh, Brother Adam Boswell's grandfather, uh, Brother Smiley's uncle. And um, they're going to be having his viewing tonight at, from 6 to 8 at Crawford Pentecostal for anybody who would, who would like to attend that. So um, is there any spoken request on my left-hand side this morning? Anybody else on my left? Anybody on my right this morning? Anybody on the platform? All right, let's all stand and uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer and take up our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Dear God, we thank you for this opportunity, dear Lord, to, to bring these prayer requests to you. God, you alone are able to, to look down into these situations, dear God. Jesus, these, these may just be names to some of us, but, but God, you know the, the situation. You know the person, God. It says that you know each and every hair that's on our head. And God, we know above all that you know the healing that needs to take place. God, you know exactly what's best for us. God, I pray that you would just have your will on these prayer requests this morning, dear Lord. God, we pray for your healing hand, dear Lord, your comforting hand, dear Lord, to come down into these these people, dear Lord, these families that are being affected, dear God. Jesus, we pray for the ones that are battling sickness and COVID this morning. God, we pray that it would just, just Lord, that it would just cease, dear God, Jesus. I pray that you would just stop the spread of it, dear Lord. Protect our schools, God. Protect our workplaces and our families, dear God. And Jesus, I pray that as we take up our uh, Sunday morning times and offerings tonight, this, excuse me, this morning, God, I pray that you would just break it, bless it, and multiply it. Just give us the wisdom and knowledge to use it for the best of your kingdom here at Mount Pleasant. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Y'all, let's pray before we get started this morning. Lord, we love you this morning. We praise you. Lord, thank you for your, for your presence being in this field, Lord. Lord, I pray that your presence be so real in here, Lord, that we can hear your sandals slapping the floor as you walk through this place, Lord. I just pray that you be in each and every aisle, Lord, be in each and every heart, Lord. Just uh, be with me this morning, Lord, and uh, we'll make sure that you get all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. So, uh, this morning, this message is titled, uh, Ego I Me. I don't know if it's up there or not, but that's a, uh, that's a Greek phrase, y'all. And it, uh, what it means is, uh, it means I am. And uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get down here with y'all if you don't mind. I don't care to be up there on the platform. But anyway, so uh, ego I me. It means I am. And uh, where this message come from, y'all, a lot of y'all in here know who I am, but uh, some of y'all don't know who I am. I, um, I'm Eric Sis, and uh, I'm a truck driver. And I drive a truck for McLean. And what we do, y'all, is we unload groceries at convenience stores and Walmarts and places like that. And they stack this trailer from the floor to the ceiling to the walls. And we go in this trailer and we take stuff and we put them on hand trucks and we roll it back and forth into the stores and out the stores. Me and my partner was on the truck, y'all, uh, probably, I'm going to say, three or four months ago. And we were talking about people who have bad attitudes and big egos. And, uh, you know, y'all, a lot of times whenever somebody gets in a pulpit or Stands down here on the floor and preaches. A lot of times they're they're speaking to themselves. And uh, me and my partner were on the truck and we were talking about people with a bad attitude and a big ego and how you can't tell them nothing, y'all. I feel like I'm qualified to speak on this subject because it ain't been that long ago that I caught the COVID. Come on. And uh, when I went to the doctor's office to see about myself, they gave me some steroid pills, y'all. And I ain't never took any steroid pills. I've had some steroid shots, but I ain't never took steroid pills. And whenever I took these pills, y'all, I, uh, I had a bad attitude. And I didn't want to be around nobody. And nobody could tell me anything, because I didn't want to hear them. I didn't want to be around them. And Tiffany told me as I was talking about this, she said, you better throw that part in there. That you, you know, that you didn't have the bad attitude. You had it for a long time. And I said, okay, well, I'll throw that in there. I'll bother me. And uh, so anyway, so I always think that if I'm gonna hear somebody talk about something, I'd rather hear somebody talk about something that's been through that, what they're talking about. Because I kind of, I tried to come up with an idea about how I could get across to that. You know, if I had a uh, flat tire and I was on the side of the road and I didn't know how to change the tire, and a fella pulled up and said, hey man, can I help you? I never read a book about how to change a tire. I didn't know what to do. I said, yeah man, come on, help me. You know, you have read the book. Obviously you know something. And me and this guy sitting there on the side of the road, he's, looking through his books, looking pages, and we're trying to figure out how to change this tire, and then a man comes up and says, hey, I work at a tire shop. I change a hundred of these a day. You want me to help you? I tell old boy the book, go on. <laughs> you know, this man knows what he's doing. I'd rather really him come in. Come on. So, so anyway, so I didn't have the bad attitude, and I didn't have the big ego, and I didn't have all that stuff, so I feel like I'm qualified to speak on this. But uh, anyway, so, so me and my partner was on that truck, we were rolling these groceries back and forth, and we talking about folks who got bad attitudes and big ego, and how you can't tell them nothing. You know, you can't tell them anything if they got bad attitudes and big ego. And I, I rolled a stack of groceries into that circle gate we was at over in Gray, Georgia, and I got thinking, I told him, I come back to the truck, and I told him, I said, Ron, I think I can go with a message about that. And he said, uh, you back up? And I said, yeah. He said, well, I said, I might take me a couple stops, and I said, well, I can figure out. I'll roll some scripts around my head and see what I can come up with this. And he said, all right, good. I said, all right, so we worked a couple more stops. We're still in gray, and we get ready to go to Milledgeville, and I got back in the truck and thought, he ain't sitting in the bottom. I'm going to take another stop. You know, I'm going to figure out something to go with this stuff. And I had done already been thinking and rolling stuff around in my head. We got headed up the road, and he said, all right, tell me the message. And I thought, damn, I thought I was going to give me another stop. I thought, I'm going to hit the bullshit we got. So I had, I had time to come up with two different people in the Bible who I felt like had bad attitudes and big ego. And so the two people that I come up with, the first one's going to be King Saul. And I'm going I'm to talk about him. And y'all, I'm going to tell y'all what how I feel about, you know, about what happened in this situation. So I ain't going to read straight out the Bible or nothing like that. 
And then the second part is not going to look at Jonah. So some of this stuff I want to say, you can't look back in the Bible and find it. I'm sorry. It's just my ideas what rolls around in my head. But anyway, so we'll start out with King Saul. So uh, so what happened with King Saul was King Saul was just a, he was a he was a, just a normal fellow, and uh, he was Saul. And uh, Israel had decided they wanted a king because all the other nations had kings, and they thought, man, well, you know, we want a king. They, they got some. Let us have a king. Right. And you know, sometimes y'all, it's a dangerous thing to want what other people have because you ain't you ain't looking at the big picture. That's right. Like, you might want a king ranch F two fifty with the battle leather seats and the Johnny's got. You might look at that truck and say, man, I want that truck. But what you don't know is Johnny's having to get up every morning at 3 o'clock in the morning and work seven days a week to be able to board that truck. And you don't want to have to do all that. You just want the truck. Amen. And you ain't looking at the big picture. So Israel wants a king, and God gives them a king, y'all. He gives them King Saul. And king Saul's crazy if you look back in the Bible and read about Saul. He ain't got no sense. And he had a prophet named Samuel that would come to him with crayons and construction paper and draw out simple instructions on what he needed to be done. And for some reason, he just couldn't figure it out. I don't, I don't get that for the life of me because it was simple. It all wrote out for him. I know one example that I had that I had was uh, King Saul was supposed to go and destroy the Amalekites. He was supposed to destroy everything. He was supposed to kill the men, the women, the children, the cows, the sheep, everything. Or, or not. The Bible says I'm going to call them cows if y'all Okay. He was supposed to destroy all that stuff. And the Lord spoke to Samuel and told him, said, get up, Saul ain't good. So Samuel gets up and he goes to where Saul is. And when he gets there, y'all, he hears the cows moving and the sheep doing their thing. And he hears all this stuff. And he says, Saul, how come? You know, I told you what to do, son. It was simple. Go in there and kill everything. How hard is that? You know, you got all these soldiers. We're supposed to kill it all. And Saul, he just, he wouldn't follow instructions, y'all. So eventually, God got tired of putting up to this crowd. And he said, you know what? If you ain't going to do like I tell you to do, I'm going to put somebody else in your place. And uh, I feel like, and I just feel like this. Like I said, you ain't going to flip back in the Bible and read this. But I feel like God come to him. He just this thing had to whisper it in his ear and said, he'd go like this. And Saul looked at him and said, what does that mean? And God laughs and he says, <laughs> Well, I'm glad you asked, son. That's a Greek phrase. And Saul said, well, I don't speak Greek. Like I said, what does that mean? And God said, it means I am. And Saul kind of looked at him and said, what do you mean I am? You am what? And God said, well, I am the one who created you. I'm the one who made everything you see, boy. And I am the one who can take it away. And if you don't believe me, call Job and ask him. And I feel like Saul had the bad attitude and he kind of, Samuel keeps on looking, and he don't find none of them, and he goes to Jesse, and he says, Jesse, didn't I ask you to line all your sons up? You just came in, you, you left that. And he said, well, God ain't spoke to me about none of these boys. Is this all the sons you got? And Jesse said, well, no, I got enough one out here in the field, and I feel like Samuel said, look, man, I've been wasting construction paper and crayons on Saul. <laughs> I'm going come here and give you some simple instructions. All you got to do is get all your sons lined up. What in the world is wrong with y'all? y'all can't follow instructions. And Jesse said, well, I, well, I said I got another one out here in the field, and I didn't bring him in here, because he's watching after the sheep. 
And, you know, he probably got sheep crap all over. Probably stinks a little bit. I don't know if you want to be around him or not. And uh, Sam just got hurried up and go get him. I'm trying to look at him. Go get him. So I feel like Jesse said, well, boy, y'all go out there and get David. And look, stop by the well by some way. And you can spray him down the well and sheep crap come off of before he makes us cross. So they run out there and get David. And they spray him down and bring him in. And uh, Samuel said, ooh, that is him. God spoke to him and said, hey, that's him. That's David. That's, that's a man after God's own heart. That's the one I want. So Samuel anoints him with the oil. Well, y'all, as quick as Samuel anoints him with the oil, David didn't just poof become the king of Israel. It don't work like that. Come on. See, when God's got something for you, it's going to be a process. Right. Right. Always going to be a process. If y'all got time, I want to share with y'all how my little process works. Okay. My little process worked like this. See, I was digging in the back of my truck trying to get a Jack Daniels bottle out. That's what I was doing to talk with. Okay, well then, I met a fellow named Ronnie Lewis, and he started telling me about God. And I said, dude, no, this old boy talking about Jesus and showing him stuff that Jesus has done done for him. You know, I didn't quit for quoting scripture, so that doesn't mean a whole lot of me. I didn't know about God. But this old, this old boy is telling me how he did this, this, and this, and showing me some stuff. I was like, man, maybe it's not too bad, but... So I got me a Bible and I started reading the Bible. And uh, as I was reading, y'all, I, I started enjoying reading the Bible. And I thought, man, what is going on right here? This ain't natural. So I was reading and looking through there. And, y'all, I started falling in love with the words on the pages. And what I didn't realize was whenever I got over to the book of John, it says in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. And then if you skip down to the 14th verse, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So I thought I was falling in love with the words on the pages. I was falling in love with Jesus. Right. That's, right. that's my process. Amen. Well, then, like I said, I, I grew up in here. And uh, I come to church one Sunday, and Gerald Taylor comes to me and says, Hey, Eric, do you want to start teaching the youth on Sundays? And I thought, hmm. Oh, I'm teaching somebody. <laughs> and uh, he said, no, I'm serious. I think about it. And I sat there and thought about it. I said, well, that might be a chance to tell some people about Jesus. Yeah, I'll try that out. I'm going to do that. So I'm still in my process. I start teaching the youth on Sundays. And uh, I start doing that. And I'm teaching. And I'm writing stuff down. Y'all, I'm telling you, I got 10, 20 pages of notes for 15 minute message. <laughs> and them youngins ain't paying me a bit. I ain't enjoying that a whole lot. Well, then the pastor comes to me and says, Hey, Gary, I'm having to ride all the way from Congress to clean the baptistry in this church every two weeks. Do you think you can start cleaning the baptistry? And I thought, man, I'm already I'm working 70 hours a week. I'm trying to get these 20 pages of notes for these 15-minute messages you folks ain't listening to me on. Um, clean the baptistry. And I thought, well, that's another chance to do something else. So I start coming up here and struggling on that baptistry every two weeks. And I was, I was really enjoying that. Didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, dead gum. So, so I'm, I'm working 70 hours a week. I'm trying to get these notes together. I'm in here struggling. And I'm doing all that. And then finally the pastor comes to me and says, hey, do you want to be the men's ministry leader here at the church? And I, I told him, I said, hold on now, hold on, hold on, listen. I can do that, but you're going to have to let me not do some of this other stuff I've been doing. I've got a whole lot going on. And he said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, look, I ain't going to teach no more. I ain't cleaning the baptistry no more. I'd love to be the men's ministry leader. Maybe them boys will listen to what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I'm still in my process, and I start doing that. Well, then, all of a sudden, he starts tapping on the window. Levi's office in there got glass on it, y'all. I'd come to church and Pastor Cal in the window, and he was like, hey, hey, come here. I said, oh. So I was walking around and I said, what is it? Man, I need you to get up there and have something to say this morning. I thought, I ain't got nothing to say. What do you mean get up there and have something to say? And uh, he said, no, no, I need you to get up there and just, just say something. Just come up with something. I said, okay. Well, I did that. So I started coming up with something to say. Well, then that happened, and then finally I started getting a little bit of pulpit down. I, I thought, man, I ain't, uh, I don't know about the pulpit down. You know, I ain't, I ain't no preacher. What in the world? And he said, no, 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 you're going to get in there, you're going to do that. But we're going to start out slow, you're going to start doing a little five-minute message. We're going to take five minutes and we'll do a five for five. And I thought, okay, well, we'll do that. So I did a little five-minute message, and well, then it led into, you know, doing stuff on Wednesdays and Sundays and stuff like that. And it's, it's just funny how God works. Yeah. You sit there and you think, man, there ain't no way I can do none of that stuff. Just like when I was working in 
His daddy told him, he said, look, son, I need you to carry some lunch over to your brothers. They over there fighting with the Philistines. Carry some lunch over there to them. So David gets to, I feel like he went to Chick-fil-A and got a couple of sandwiches. And y'all made that one of chicken, right? And uh, he carried them some number ones over to the battlefield. Well, David's over there passing out number ones, and he thought, number one. I thought this, uh, I thought these boys, Eddie said these boys was over here fighting. They ain't doing nothing. This giant come out here talking crazy. They just standing here. They scared to death. Why am I bring them food? I don't waste all my money at Chick fil A. Food on these rocks because I ain't even like nobody. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so he's standing there listening to this giant talk crap. And he said, Man, I, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like what's happening right here. So, uh, so David goes to King Saul and says, Look, I'll go up there and I'll fight that giant. And King Saul goes, Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, like I said, he's there. You can't fight with him. You know, he knows everybody. That's how people with bad attitudes and big egos are. They think they know everything. Yeah. You can't fight him. That man's been fighting. He's going to beat you out all about your head. Boy, you better not go with him. <laughs> and David said, No, I want to fight him. He said, Look, God's been putting me through a process. So I thought I was out there tending with some sheep. But heck, I don't fall a lion and a bear. I mean, you know, if you tangle with some wild like a lion or a bear, y'all, a big old giant ain't going to be nothing to him. Hey, he's a person. So David said, look, I done been through a process. I'm ready to go out and fight him. And, uh, so what happened was King Saul said, well, okay, well, it's your funeral. Go ahead, son. But look, put this armor on before you go out there. At least you have a little bit of protection. And David throws that old junk on, and he said, I don't like this stuff. I don't like the way it feels. It ain't comfortable to me. It ain't natural. So David takes the armor off, and he gets his sling. And I feel like he went down there to the, to the river, the creek, the stream, whatever he went to. He said he picked up five and moved on. On his way down there, don't you know David was talking to God? Oh my God, you, know, yeah. you help me out with this line and this bear. Come on, now, let's do this, yeah. That's what I want to do. So he picked up, the Bible says he picked up five smooth stones, y'all. And I heard Brent Lewis say this, y'all, that he picked up F A I T H. That's five letters. He picked up five smooth stones. And I, I feel like he did that because, you know, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. That's right. Come on. Without faith, see, the same David would have went out on that battlefield with a giant. He believed that he was going to kill him. But anyway, so he picked up five smooth stones. He hit Goliath in the head, killed him, cut his head off with a sword, and picked his head up, y'all, and carried it up in there. And just, I believe he throws it up in Saul's tent. He said, look here. Look what happened. <laughs> How about that? That's, uh, you know, the mic drum. Just, I'm done. And um, anyway, so so then the people in Israel start singing songs about David, how, how bad he is. Killing all these people, he's, he's fighting, he's winning, he's just doing it. And uh, King Saul gets a little, a little bit more of a bad attitude. He gets jealous, and he don't like that. So, um, so anyway, so here David is. People singing songs about him. King Saul has bad attitude. He don't like it. He's steady trying to kill David. If you'll read the Bible and, and hear all that, he's steady trying to kill him. And David has a couple opportunities to kill King Saul. He didn't do it, y'all, because David knew what the scripture said. It says, touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. So David didn't, didn't hurt King Saul. Even though King Saul was doing it right, he was still anointed to be the king of Israel. All right, so he didn't kill him. But Saul just kept on trying to kill him. And I always wondered, I said, why would God keep on letting Saul try to kill David? You know, David was a man after God's own heart. But I heard a preacher, y'all, I was listening to some messages on YouTube or somewhere, and this preacher said that he believed the reason why it happened, and I believe this also, was because God was allowing Saul to kill all of the Saul that made me and David when he became the king. Now, I know that's maybe hard to take in right there, but he was allowing him to kill all the Saul that made me and him when he became the king. Do y'all remember being little kids? And your mama, your aunt, your uncle, your daddy, somebody did something, and you thought, man, when I grow up, I ain't going to do that. I mean, I know all of us in here remember stuff like that. So that's what was happening with David. He said, man, when I grow up and get to be the king, I ain't going to act like this fool right here. Yeah. I ain't going to be doing all this. So that's what God was allowing to go on. So, so I believe that we can all agree that Saul had a bad attitude with big Israel. So the next person that I picked out during these two shots on the blind truck was Jonah. Okay? Now I feel like Jonah had a bad attitude with big Israel. 
So Jonah was told that he was going to go to Nineveh and preach to the Ninevites. And he didn't want to go. Now, when I was a little boy, I would sit in Sunday school or wherever we sat, we'd hear about Jonah and the fish walking and stuff, right? Well, I always wondered why in the world did he not just go to Nineveh? He was a preacher. Heck, it wasn't going to be no issue to go over and preach to them folks and go home, right? But later on in life, I found out the reason why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh is because the Ninevites were evil people. When the prophets would come into town and go to preaching to them, they would take them boys like a deer and take a knot and cut up their, cut up their arms, cut down their stomach, cut down their legs, and they would defone them, right? Defone them. Take the, the flesh out of everything out from not the flesh, but the, the meat, everything out from the inside, and take the carcasses and hang them up on the post outside the city gates as a sign to don't come up in here preaching. We don't want to hear your stuff. You know what I'm saying? So whenever you come into Nineveh, you may see some bodies hanging up from the from the post out there. So no wonder he didn't want to go over and preach. He was worried he was going to get deep on. Right. All right. So I feel like God come to him after he said he didn't want to go and cuffed his hand and said, John, this is the ego I mean. And John looked at him and said, I don't know what that means. And God said, well, that's a Greek phrase. And he said, what does it mean? And God said, I'm glad you asked. What it means is I am. John said, well, you ain't what? And God said, well, I am the one who created you. I am the one who gave you the ability to preach. I am the one who made everything you see. I created all of this stuff. And I am the one who's going to create a fish to swallow you, boy, if you don't go over to the Nineveh and preach. <laughs> and I feel like John laughed and said, look, man, I've been around fish my whole life. My whole life. That a fish can't swallow me. I can't fit inside of his stomach. He ain't gonna be able to swallow me. And God said, Boy, you are just listening to me. I just said that I am the one who will create a fish to swallow you. And if you don't believe me, just keep on. You're gonna see. So Jonah gets on the boat, y'all, but he don't believe it. And he goes the other direction from them. Well, next thing we see in the Bible is that he got thrown off the boat and a fish come to swallow him up. And I thank God has a sense of humor. But the Bible says that John was inside that fish praying. I thank God just left him enough room to be able to pray. That's what I believe. So he's inside the fish and he's praying. And y'all know what's inside the stomach. Uh, stomach. Acid, you know, saliva, different things inside the stomach. So I believe what happened was while John was in there praying, y'all, that acid was eating the hair off of him. You know, off his arms, off his legs, off his head. Probably looked like he had the mange when he come out of that. Well, then we read about that fish spitting him up on the seashore. Well, guess where he spit him up at, y'all? Nineveh. That's where he spit him out at. And I can just see Jonah rolling through the sand out there. All right, so now he's got hair missing, look like he got the munch. He got sand all over him. I believe he got up off the ground and was dusting himself off. I'm like, hey, you know, I got to go in here and preach to these folks. And then I feel like he can come to the city gates, and there's a post or some boats hanging all over him. And he said, Lord, I hope you're with me. Good grace, I've been inside this fish. I got this sand all over me. You know, he's probably shaking stuff out of his breeches legs. Or he probably had on the road, whatever he had on the dress, I don't know. But he's shaking stuff out of him. And he's looking at these folks hanging up here. And he's like, hey, gum, why do I got to go do this? Well, he walks on in there. And I feel like he went up through all them people. You know, they're thinking about getting him because that's what they do to prophets. Because they know who he is. And uh, he's like, Please be with me, Jesus. And he walked on in there, and uh, I feel like he came to the king and said, Hey, I got something to tell you. And the king said, Well, who, who, Lord, have mercy, where did you come from? Don't touch nobody. Hold on now. Don't touch nobody. What do you got to say, John? I believe you must have been a Pentecostal preacher, John. Because whenever he had all the God, the Bible says all the folks got in sackcloth and ashes. So what that meant is they got in the forest material, and they sat down in some ashes, and they'd throw ashes all over themselves because they would repent. Right? Well, John ain't learned nothing, y'all. Whenever this happened, he went up there on a the hill and got mad at God for forgiving these evil people. Got mad at him. Ain't learned a thing. Nothing. Then he got swallowed up by a fish, that sand, saliva, the mange, everything. He ain't learned nothing. And so he's, so John was still, he's got a bad attitude. Bad attitude, y'all. And it's a terrible thing to have a bad attitude. Here, let me get some of this music. 
So I'm, I'm not going to take too much more of y'all time up, but I want to share a little story with y'all. Y'all, there was a uh, there was a prospector, and uh, he was going on a five day journey. And for the life of him, he could not figure out how to carry enough water with him, but for three days. He was a five day journey, he didn't have enough water for three days. So he worried about this uh, this journey that he had to go on. And he found some boys, and they had them been on the same journey. And he said, Look, boys, I need to go on this journey because I heard whenever I get to where I'm going, I'm going to be able to make a whole lot of money. And they said, Yeah, you're going to make money. It's going to be good because we done been on the journey. See, we done did well. We come home, we paid our houses off, got all the cars paid for, we were ready to go. Not cars, I didn't see cars, I'm going to say horses. Got all the horses paid off, we were ready to go. He said, well, good. Well, I want to I wanna go on the journey. And they said, well, listen, what will happen is you're going to get on the journey, and you're going to get three days in, and you're going to come across a well. He said, well, I can't get enough water to carry when we both for three days. They said, well, that's good, because by the time you run out, you'll be to the well. It's going to be all right. So he said, okay. So he trusted these fellas, and uh, he set out on the journey, y'all. Well, he got three days in, and uh, he run out of water, and he still ain't come across a well. So he got a little bit worried, and uh, he got to think, man, I hope these guys told me right about going on this journey. I hope I, hope I do come across the well. And, uh, well, as he walked, y'all, he, uh, he was looking for the well. He was looking hard for it because he wanted this water, and he done got thirsty because he done run out. Well, off in the distance, he seen a well, and there's an old pump style well, y'all. He seen the hand sticking, sticking out, and he run over there to it. And he grabbed the handle on that old pump, and he started pumping it. And that well was just boom, boom. It caught him. It spit sand out of him. He said, come these rascals didn't tell me right the well that went dry. They must have been a long time since they've been on this journey. Well, he got to kicking around it. The shaft on that old well, y'all. He was kicking around it. And he looked on the mic, and he said, there's something right there. And he just held it off. And it was a note. find a jug of water. And if you'll take and pour it down the well onto the foot of the pump, it'll prime the pump. And if you prime the pump, then you'll have all the water that you'll ever need. P.S. Don't forget to fill the jug back up. And he said, man, how about that? So he's sitting there, and he's got his left. And he's going to find a jug of water. And he said, all right. Well, I got this jug of water, and I'm thirsty. Good. Looks wet. I'm thinking about drinking that water instead of pouring it down this well. And he's sitting there looking at it, and he looks at that letter, and he says, Man, boy, I got a decision to make. I could either trust and believe what this letter says, or I could keep this water right here, and it'll keep me just a little bit longer. But man, I got a letter right there, and it says if I fill this jug back up and everything, you know, it's going to be all right for the next person. So y'all, what I want you to know this morning is, uh, see that old boy, that prospector, he got a letter. Well, we got a letter. So God wrote us a letter. Yeah. Look, this letter that he's got is simple instructions, just like Samuel. Craigon's construction paper, simple. Just do it like this. That's the same thing he's got right here. He's got a letter. Y'all, we got a letter. Our letter is simple. There ain't a whole lot to this right here. You know, sometimes we uh, we make this thing right here complicated. This thing is simple. There ain't nothing to this. It's simple. And that letter is simple. It's the one that he's reading right there. But what I believe God is asking us to do, and that, that prospector, he took the advice of the letter, y'all. And I believe what God's asking us to do is he's asking us to start pouring ourselves out. Just pour ourselves out. And if we'll do that, y'all, we'll have everything we'll ever need. Everything we'll ever need. He wants us to pour out all that bitterness, all that anger. Frustration, hatred, all that stuff. Just pour it out. When we get done, y'all, we'll make sure we got everything that we need. Everything. And as I, as I was studying this right here, y'all, I got to think about the prodigal son. And how everybody's heard that story about the prodigal son. How he got away from his father's house for a little while. And uh, he did his own thing, y'all, and that don't really work out. Whenever you get away from the father's house and you start doing your own thing. It, uh, the Bible says that, and when he came to himself, y'all, sometimes it takes us a long time. It took me a long time. 
to come to myself and realize that he's in control of all of it. Every bit of it. Every bit of it is in control of it, y'all. And in John, the 14th chapter, Jesus said, now written in red, when it's written in red, y'all, you need to pay attention to it. Right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So you might sit in here this morning like there ain't no way. But y'all, it's just, just like the title to the message, Ego I Be. Jesus said, Ego I Be. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way, y'all. So we're going to open up this altar. I'm going to 